The reigning champion Boston Celtics evidently didn't get complacent given the late summer addition of six-year, 25-year-old shooting guard Lonnie Walker. After surpassing the Lakers for the most championship rings among all 30 NBA teams, the Walker addition signifies how the C's are embracing the inevitable target placed on them from every opponent in the 24-25 season. From the moves they've made in order to give themselves a shot at a repeat to the mentality they're using to prep for it, stay tuned to see how the Boston Celtics powerhouse took a leap. Right quick, just 24% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and X at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. I have a new Twitter account by the way, so help me out by following me there. Thank you for your support, you are appreciated tremendously. Before hitting free agency, Lonnie Walker tweeted, I ain't even reached my prime yet, y'all gonna see soon, the apology better be just as loud as the disrespect. The most recent post from Lonnie comes via his Instagram story which shows Walker's arrival in Boston and is captioned with, This chapter is going to be one hell of a story, time to work. It'll be interesting to see how Lonnie lives up to his words. Throughout his career, the shooting guards posted three 10 plus point per game seasons which came consecutively, in which he never played over 25 and a half minutes per game, and shot as high as 53.4% from the field in 2022-23 for the Lakers. Last season for the Nets, he averaged 9.7 points per game, but most notably shot 38% from deep, was in the 90th percentile in terms of catch and shoot threes, and shot 51% on corner threes. The most memorable moment for Walker came in the 2023 Western Conference semifinals where all 15 of his Game 4 points came in the fourth quarter, which gave the Lakers a 3-1 series lead over the Golden State Warriors. In terms of his fit with his new team in Massachusetts, Lonnie's reunited with Derek White as the two guards were teammates with the San Antonio Spurs, so we'll see if Joe Mazzulla decides to make the White-Walker combination a thing next season. Walker gives the Celtics another off-the-dribble penetrator next to Peyton Pritchard off the bench, someone who can collapse the defense for floor spacers like Sam Hauser and Al Horford. Again, we'll see if Missoula mixes and matches to give Lonnie some minutes with the starters, or whether he takes a more conservative approach and makes Lonnie earn a spot in the rotation during practices by keeping him towards the end of the bench as internal competition. Either way, Brad Stevens has struck again and struck hard, with a pickup the rest of the league seemed to have slept on. Considering how the rest of the league let Walker be a free agent till the end of the summer, where Lonnie ultimately landed in the laps of the reigning champs, it goes back to how he'll make his previous posts on X and Instagram come to fruition. In addition to the most recent Walker signing, Brad Stevens has within the last half decade traded Kemba Walker to get Al Horford back traded Romeo Lankford for Derek White, traded Marcus Smart for Chris Stapps Porzingis and two first rounders, re-signed Jalen Brown, traded Malcolm Brogdon and Robert Williams III for Drew Holiday, re-signed Porzingis, Holiday, and White on pay cuts, and hired Joe Mazzulla, all leading to a championship and a roster that gives Boston a chance to contend annually. This makes Brad undeniably the best GM in the NBA right now, and quite frankly, it really isn't close. Feel free to argue otherwise down below in the comments, but in my view, there really just isn't much competition for Stevens at the moment in terms of top executives. The coach Stevens replaced Udoka with in 2022 in Missoula, outcoached Eric Spolstra, JB Bickerstaff, Rick Carlisle, and Jason Kidd in the 2024 playoffs, earning the trust and love of the top player who had been known for admiring Ime in Jason Tatum, who bear-hugged Joe upon winning his first ring. Missoula had some big words regarding his team's 24-25 title defense, saying, quote, People are going to say the target is on our back, but I hope it's right between our forehead, in between our eyes. I hope I can see the red dot, end quote. Make a note of the pressure that's of course going to be there by utterly embracing it, and then some, is a great call from Joe. Missoula is aware of how the last five NBA champions have dealt with that target by not being able to repeat, of course, and the fact that he's getting his troops ready for what's to come is a tremendous sign for Boston's 2025 chances. Missoula's two top dogs were just good enough to get the job done in the NBA Finals, but it was in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers where the best duo in the NBA, being Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, shined the brightest. 
In them, the game's top tandem combined to average 60 points while each shooting on efficient 46 plus percent from the field. Jalen Brown hit a ridiculous bailout shot from the corner in game one after a crazy comeback down the stretch. Jason Tatum had two 36 point games. A series later in their second career finals appearances, I think it's safe to say Jalen Brown deserved finals MVP for dropping four 20 plus point games, including a 30 piece. Not to mention for his defense on Luka Doncic. The all-time snub for Team USA defended LD for over 32 minutes, where he held the Slovenian sensation to 9 for 22 shooting from the field, 2 for 8 from deep range, and forced him into 5 turnovers. At the same time, Jason Tatum's finals closeout performance where he posted 31 points, 11 assists, 8 rebounds, and 2 steals in 45 out of 48 minutes of action didn't get respected enough. It demonstrated to us how JT's been a timely player throughout his entire career with the stage presence to show up in the biggest moments there are. It's incredibly disrespectful how writers like Jack T. and Dana detail how Tatum has a lack of aura and cringy antics, as with what he does on both ends of the court, Jason's proven to be a winner throughout his entire career. Since joining the NBA, Jason Tatum is first in playoff points and playoff wins. Where's the respect for this man, and why are people actually giving him the opposite? Shifting from Boston's two top talents to the team's unsung hero, Derek White, and the tooth-twisted bald mambo was as briefly mentioned in the Brad Stevens segment, re-signed on a pay cut. The amount the Celtics saved with his deal was pretty ridiculous, as D. White was wrapped up by Brad Stevens for $85 million less than Jamal Murray's recent four-year deal with the Denver Nuggets. Drew Holiday's stock exchange running mate in the backcourt plays like a man in the frontcourt, as White's one of the springiest guards I've ever seen. Derek had more total blocks this past season in 23-24 than reputable shot blockers like Bam Adebayo, Giannis Adetokounmpo, Evan Mobley, Jarrett Allen, Derek Lively, Ivica Zubats, and Yusuf Nurkic. Signifying his two-way value that includes perimeter defense, the ability to manufacture his own look off the bounce, spot up with proficient accuracy, and generally produce with one of the highest two-way IQs in basketball, Derek led the 2024 playoffs in net rating, an advanced stat in which the Celtics had the top six ranked players in. One of those players in the top six was fan-favorited big the godfather Al Horford. The Celtics record with Chris Stapp's Porzingis between the season and playoffs was 48 and 15, but the craziest part is how they made up for the 35 games KP missed, as they went 30 and 5 in those games, a better win percentage than with the valuable stretch 5 present. For that 30 and 5 record minus the 2023 edition of Porzingod, Al Horford hasn't received nearly enough credit for his drop coverage and switchability to hold in check the quick twitch shot creation of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. The lateral mobility of this man, Alfred Joel Horford Reynoso, knows no bounds, and it's mythical how this man moved his feet at the advanced basketball age of 38. It's Horford to me, but out of anyone in the organization, who hasn't received enough respect for this Celtics team winning their 18th chip? Let me know down below. This was your boy D-Flow. Have a great one, and I'll see you next video.